I think you actually learn sketching better if you start using those tools very early on in, in, in the process. Hello everyone. Today we have the pleasure of having Martin Vandeville as one of our guests. I'm really happy to be having him here today because we're going to have a very interesting conversation about himself, but also we're going to try to distill the idea of expressing ideas and kind of like almost decomposing what a sketch is all about. So Martin, I'll leave it to you to introduce yourself and give us a bit of uh, your background. Thanks, Daniela. Um, super excited to be uh, part of the show. Thanks for inviting me. Um, yeah, so I'm Martijn. Uh, I teach uh, design sketching classes. Um, I'm also an industrial designer, but uh, in recent years I've been gravitating more towards uh, teaching, teaching of the, the skill of sketching. So I teach in, uh, in various places. Um, I teach here in Den Haag, The Hague, which is in the Netherlands. Um, uh, I teach at the uh, university in Eindhoven, industrial design. Uh, I also teach classes at aerospace engineering at the TU Delft, uh, as well as workshops around the world. I was just actually in, at Imperial College in London, uh, your school, I believe. Um, yeah. So yeah, the teaching and training of the design sketching skill is, uh, is what I do, uh, mostly. Yeah, so perfect person to be talking about the sketching side of things. And so... Martin, tell us a little bit about how did you get started with industrial design? There's usually a, an interesting story there. How I got started with industrial design, okay. Um, well, this goes way, way back. This is when I was still in high school. Um, I always had an interest in, in drawing and sketching. So as a kid, I was, I was always drawing cartoons and I read a lot of cartoons, but was also trying to copy them and, and find my own style of drawing cartoons. Um, and then when it was time to like, look for uh, follow-up studies, um, I thought about graphic design, I thought about illustration, and I went to all these uh, schools. And um, it was eventually it was my uncle who said, I have a friend who's an industrial designer. He owns a firm, and uh, if you want, you can visit the firm uh, here in, uh, in Leiden. Um, so I did that when I was about 16, 17, I, I would say. And um, so I visited the studio and was, uh, was sold. I, I really liked the atmosphere of the design studio, um, seeing all those designers create. I mean, the most simple stuff, like bathroom uh, uh, sanitary stuff, like uh, the floor of, uh, of the shower and the... Uh, um, like garden tools and stuff like that. Very simple stuff, but uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, sitting next to them and seeing how they were creating those items. Um, so then I started looking for, uh, for schools that I could apply to, and uh, I started my, um, my studies in The Hague here uh, at the school where I, where I still teach, uh, Industrial Product Design. And... Um, and continued later on, I did two internships, one in Eindhoven, one in Milan. Uh, and the one in Milan was at Design Continuum, which is uh, an American firm. And they had uh, a couple of designers that came from Art Center, and um, that was still in Switzerland at the time, um, but had just moved to Los Angeles. And so I said, I, I was very impressed with their skill sets. So I said, I would like to like sketch how, the way you sketch and design the way you design. And so where did, you, where did you learn that? And they said, well, we went to Art Center and they have great teachers there and great classes. And, um, so I, uh, I found a way to uh, continue my studies for one year at Art Center in Los Angeles. And that was in 1999, <laughs> so also a long time ago. Um, but that's, uh, that's where I did an additional year and then I ended up working in the United States for a while, worked in, uh, in Chicago at a design firm. And, um, and from there, uh, moved back to Den Haag uh, and started my own practice in uh, 2002, I believe it was. So that's kind of how I landed in industrial design. Nice. 
interesting story. I, I ended up going to Art Center for a, for a while as well, so we share that. <laughs> um, a wow, bit later. in Pasadena. Yeah, in Pasadena. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. All right. So you had quite a journey going into design, into industrial design, and that's usually the case. Nobody actually knows that industrial design exists until somehow somebody presents it right. to you. Um, and yeah. then, I mean, I, 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 like, it's really interesting to see how you started because you had this passion of sketching of like, you know, the, drawing these this kind of like characters and, and things like that. And then you found a route, like a route to continue that passion that you had, but applying it to something very specific. Right. And now, in a yeah, way, you exactly. have built an entire career still about that, right? Like still about expressing ideas in a visual way. And so I would love to hear from you what, what, how do you, how would you describe what a sketch is? <laughs> what is a sketch? I, I actually asked a similar question to my students recently. Uh, I, I asked them, what is a good sketch? What makes a good sketch? But yeah, let's start with what is a sketch? Um, well, I, I think there's many definitions. It kind of depends a little bit on, on the angle you take. But in, in its uh, purest form, I would say it's, uh, it's pen and paper or pencil and paper. And um, it's roughing out an idea or it's the representation of, of thoughts on paper. But if you take it a little bit broader, I would say making mock-ups, model making is also sketching. I think like it's more about the noun than the, the or the more about the verb than the noun. So it's more about sketching rather than the sketch. Uh, the sketch is the result of the process. So if, if you were, um, I, I always say sketching is investigating something, it's exploring. And so if it's not, then it's a drawing. Right, so I make that distinction. So it's a drawing or illustration is the result of something that you already have in your mind, an idea or a shape or a character, and then you you draw that uh, and and you make it look as much, uh, or you want to make it look as much as the image that you have in your head. Whereas sketching for me is really starting. Uh, with a starting point and then seeing where it will go, where it will take you. So um, that's much more of a, of a uh, process where you investigate the possibilities. And um, um, yeah, so that's to me, the distinction between, between sketching and drawing is very, uh, as very, two very different activities. The connection that you have between your idea and then just kind of like somehow externalizing it and then just using whatever medium you're, you need to be using to kind of like continue having that idea shaped. And that, I love that because, you know, sometimes, sometimes you are not, um, you're not like, you're not fully aware of what you want to create. Right. And as a designer, you're like, you have exactly. something in there, it's cooking, but in a way you have to kind of like bring it out, see it and then bring it in again to continue that flow. Yeah, there, there's a big misconception about design. And often if you, if you talk to people who don't know about industrial design, they, and you tell them, well, you're, I'm a designer, they go, oh, so you're, you're, you invent stuff. You're an inventor, right? And uh, so you have a lot of ideas. And like, the, the common conception is that, that design is about having an idea, and then you draw the idea, and then you, you build the idea, and then you sell the idea, basically. But, um, and, and I guess when I started uh, my studies, that was kind of also the idea that I had about design, that you had to have good ideas and then you would make the idea. Um, but then, luckily, I discovered that there is actually a, a process. There is, a, uh, there is room to improve your idea. It starts with an idea or a direction, I would prefer to call it. And then from there... Um, you, you craft your idea, you shape it, you uh, develop it, you iterate, and uh, you never end where you think you will end. The, I'm always surprised with 
what I end up with. It's it's hardly ever what I thought it would be at the end or at the beginning when I started. So um, it, there's one thing I always start my classes with. I always say, um, I believe sketching stimulates the imagination. Uh, and that's because I've that's what I've experienced. So as soon as I start sketching my thoughts, I start to see things that I didn't know or didn't see before. And um, those ideas that I get from looking at my own sketch or, or from like just moving my hand on the paper will give me a feeling, will give me an experience that I didn't have before. And, and it's teaching me something. I'm, I'm learning from my own sketch. Um, so it, because I experienced that and the, the power it gave me, uh, that's what I try to teach my students as well. So it's always my goal to have them experience this, um, yeah, the power of, uh, of sketching and discovering things in your own uh, workflow. Yeah. And so how, how is this process for you, like the process of discovering those different things? Because when you're sketching something, you have like, in a way you're like, because you're sketching it, you're having to resolve a lot of things on the go, right? Like you're like, oh, I didn't think about this. And then you're like, just putting it there. Um, but then you're also having to, in a way, turn that idea, that direction that you have in your head, like around, turn it around and then just like, start visualizing different sides of it. It's that part of your process as in like, are you kind of like sketching multiple views so that in a way it continues shaping in your head? Yeah, so let me describe my workflow a little bit. When, when I'm designing uh, products um, and I'm working on the, the visual brand language, so the aesthetics of the, of the product, which, which was my core business for a while, um, what I usually do is I start with some kind of very rough, simple CAD model. And uh, the CAD model is like the package. Uh, it has the mechanics of the object. It has uh, the overall dimensions, proportions. Uh, like the, the, the most important components are, are in there. Um, but it's not uh, a fully developed model. It's, it's just very rough to get an idea of the, the basic proportions of this, this thing that we're designing. Then what I do is I create um, perspective views of this object uh, from different angles, uh, side views, top view, front view, but also three quarter views from, from left, right, uh, more from the top, more from below. Um, and then I make prints. So I print those usually on A3 um, and those, those are my underlays. So I start my sketch process, not with a, an empty white page, but I actually have underlayers. I, um, I use the, the CAD models as, as the underlay to get started with, uh, with my process. Usually I start with the side views. That's just the quickest way to get into the, um, the design. And once I have a couple of pages of, of side views, I usually get curious about what this shape will look like in 3D. So I start to uh, use one of the uh, perspective underlays and start sketching directly on top of that. Um, and yeah, so I, I quickly swap like the different underlays to, like you said, create visuals for myself to see what does this look like from the back? What does it look like from the top? What does it look like from, from the most important angles? Wow, very, very surprising process. I wasn't expecting you to say that you were first doing CAD and then starting sketching. Um, interesting one there. Yeah, and, say, and yeah. sometimes I use photography as well. Yeah, so photography. Okay. This is also part of what I teach. Yeah, so in, in my classes, I uh, have my students also create underlays. I think it's... Uh, it's a, it's a very good starting point for your creative process. Like like I said, instead of starting with a white page, which which can be quite intimidating, like you're staring at this blank page and there's there's nothing there, and you're like, oh, I have to come up with these ideas now. If you start with this underlay, there's already something on the page, and and it's m much more easy to to get into that process and uh, and start investigating. Uh, but yeah, photography, cat models. Um, yeah, those, those are the most important elements in my, uh, in my workflow. And so in a way, these CAD models, these photographies 
are still sketches, right? Like there's still kind of like a way of you figuring out how to bring that direction out to the world and kind of like continue yeah. like developing it and going into that creative flow. Exactly. They're, they're all part of the, of the workflow. Um, I mean, I wouldn't call the CADML a sketch or the, the photograph a sketch, but they're part of the sketching process for me. Yeah. Yeah. That and sense. so you mentioned that a sketch doesn't necessarily have to be like, it can be many different things, right? Like it can be a physical model. Um, so do you actually do other sort of sketching like in your process? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, so for me, again, it's not so much the definition of sketch, but sketching. So it, as soon as I'm investigating thoughts, ideas, um, shapes, uh, then I, I refer to, as a, to the, this process as sketching. And um, so in that process, I use uh, foam models. I use cardboard models, They're like the, the, the two and a half D model. Like you know that one, the, the foam board where you uh, have a side view and a front view and a top view and you uh, insert them into each other, um, where you create this yeah, very simple, almost wireframe shape, which already gives you a lot of insight in, uh, in what the, the physical proportions of the object are which is very different or difficult to see on uh, a 2D sketch. Like even if you sketch uh, scale one to one on a on an A3 page, like if you if you can fit your product on on an A3, it's not always the case. But uh, if you can, then still it's hard to see the real scale of this uh, this product. Um, yeah from from the the page so as soon as you put that on a piece of uh, foam core cut it out and then put some sections on there you already qu very quickly get a, a very good sense of what that product um, looks like in 3d so yeah th those are the, the tools that i use mostly to move forward and then uh, i'm actually pretty bad in cat modeling myself. I've done that in the past quite a bit, but uh, I started working with people that are so good in cat that uh, for me, it's just much easier to have them build the cat model and me just sitting next to them and pointing out, like pull that up a little further or push that in. And, um, so I, I sit next to cat modelers quite a bit. All right, interesting. Because yeah, it, it, it is important to eventually bring it into 3d somehow right i mean you mentioned that your process is kind of like combining those yeah. two like the physical aspect those kind of like foam models that are informing the actual scale sometimes the human factors you know like how is it actually interacting with the actual exactly. human um but then eventually digitally creating something so i would be interested to hear how have you been thinking i mean and, and this is kind of like just you're just getting started in this world, but you know, like about 3D sketches, does that actually mean something to you, like in the digital form? Like, you know, still sketching, um, but outside yeah, of I a mean, piece of paper. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would definitely still call that sketching. And um, I, I have been uh, experimenting a little bit in the past couple of weeks with uh, with the headset and uh, and gravity sketch. So I, I know what you're talking about. Um, and I can, I can, I can definitely uh, see that there is a lot of opportunity there. Um, and I, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I, I would really love to dive into this and, uh, and spend some time getting more familiar with the tools to, uh, to see where it really could bring the most value. Because at the moment, I just see a lot of opportunity, but I, I, I haven't uh, tested it out myself yet. I'm also skeptical. Um, so it's it's also like I'm used to this process, that the workflow that I just described, is that that's my default. So whenever I have a project, uh, time is super constrained. There is tight deadlines. And uh, there there's usually no time to start like 
investigating new tools and, and getting used to new or integrating new items or tools in your in your workflow. So I would have to create time to uh, yeah to skill myself in the new tools um, so that I know where it brings the most most value and where I can um, where I can place it in my workflow. And as I, as I see it now, I think it would be a, a really nice bridge in between in between the those cardboard models and the 3D models. So before I would go into a workshop and uh, work with with foam, which is quite an investment uh, time-wise to to yeah craft these uh, physical models. I think gr something like Gravity Sketch where you can still sketch uh, in, in a different form. I think that would allow me to more quickly get, um, yeah, get uh, or evaluate the results of that process uh, at that point in time. So, so that's I think where I would like to start, and then uh, and then see where it takes me. Yeah, I love that because ultimately that's what it's all about, right? Like evaluating your idea, like really understanding it from all of the different angles and dimensions and like, you know, like how, you know, when you're sketching on a piece of paper, you're having to create multiple views and that's your way into really understanding how this thing looks like, how this product that you are creating looks like. And so, yeah, I'll be I'll be really interested um, to hear how your progress goes um, with that. Changing gears a little bit, um, I was watching some of your um, your videos and your Instagram kind of like feeds and so on, and I saw one of the videos that you were talking about that design is all about cheating or sketching is all about cheating. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. You would like to hear more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, great. Um, so th this is one of the things I, I uh, tell my students, also a little bit as a way to shock them. Um, but it's something I discovered very late in, in my career. Um, or, I mean, early in my career, but late in... in I, wish, I wish someone had told this to me when I was still a design student. Because... I experienced uh, in in design school uh, it was almost not done to um, to use the underlays that I just talked about to use CAD models and and uh, I felt that it was uh, as a designer you would need to be able to um, design or or create your sketches without any guidance like that was the ultimate goal that you you could sketch any shape, any product, any perspective, uh, just from scratch. And, um, and yeah, I mean, so I, I build my skill. I try to get to a level that, I, that allowed me to, to, uh, to become more comfortable doing something in that direction. But, I, but it never felt really comfortable because the moment you start building that sketch and you invest in it and you spend... I don't know, maybe at that time in my studies, I was spending like hours on a, on a sketch. Uh, and then you become very uh, uh, afraid to make mistakes because you've already spent two hours creating this sketch and now you're, you're grabbing your markers and you're going to render it. And what if I make a mistake and uh, I have to start all over again? So, um, but it wasn't until... I started doing my internships that I saw other designers who were cheating, right? They were, they were using CAD models as underlays. They were using photography. They, they would make foam models, take pictures of those and, and uh, print those pictures and, and use those as starting points. So uh, I decided to create a video for my students in, in, my, uh, in my classes, as well as in my, my online class, uh, where I... Uh, uh, and I called it uh, cheating is okay. Uh, and I explain exactly this. I, I say, okay, uh, I have all these examples of using uh, cat models and photography and using those as underlays and that it's totally fine. All designers do that. And uh, there's no reason to be ashamed that, you, uh, that you're using these, these uh, 
yeah, these tools or these uh, artifacts in that process. So that's what cheating is okay is all about. I, I love that because I agree a hundred percent with you. I wish as well that somebody had told me that when I was studying. I mean, probably they don't tell you this. I mean, you do <laughs> to your students, but they yeah. don't tell you this so that you push yourself like really hard and then you find it out, right? Like you find out that you can actually like bring in some extra things to help you, but. Yeah, but it, it's, I don't think it's, uh, it's even necessary to, to not tell students this to, to make them become better in sketching. I think you actually learn sketching better if you start using those tools very early on in, in, in the process. Because you, if you start tracing uh, objects, and actually it starts earlier, if you take pictures of the objects, you already start to see things. If you, if you look through the lens of a camera, you see other things than you see with your naked eye. So the moment you look through a lens and you're walking around this object, um, you start to see how the, the perspective is changing. You start to see the foreshortening effect. You start to see the convergence of certain uh, edges. And so I, I have actually this in one of my classes is the it's called the field trip where I send my students out with a camera and they have to investigate objects in different sizes. So uh, very small objects like pencil sharpeners uh, and then printers or laptops and then bigger and bigger until ultimately like buildings where you have to look up to see the whole thing. Um, and in doing so, they... Um, yeah, like I said, they look through the lens and they see all these differences, like what happens if you get really close to the object, what, what happens if you get further away, and uh, when does the perspective become distorted or warped, when does it feel unnatural, when does it feel more natural, when does it feel static, or when does it feel very dynamic. Um, and then I have them print those images and uh, sketch right over them with, uh, with a red pen. Uh, to extend all the edges, to find the vanishing point, to see what's happening with convergence and and, um, and foreshortening, and so the the cheating is actually I've, I've integrated that even more in the process of learning to sketch um, to speed up that process of understanding perspective. Because if you're learning to sketch is quite uh, complicated. You're you're combining a lot of things in that process. You're combining uh, or you have to build an understanding of perspective, which is uh, one of the biggest things, one of the most difficult things to fully grasp. Um, and then you have to train your motor skill, so your physical ability to move your pen uh, with confidence, uh, to create straight lines, fluent lines, to create ellipses. That's training, that's, that's uh, hard labor to get, uh, to get that into your system. Um, and then there's the working with markers to create renderings, to create material reflections and, uh, and textures and uh, just basic shading, understanding how light is falling onto objects and how it's casting shadows. There's all these aspects, line weight, uh, how, do you, how do you use line weight to create depth within, within your sketch? Combining all that is super, super difficult and it takes a lot of time before you uh, develop all those elements uh, to a level that you feel confident enough to apply it in the context of a creative process. Because that's ultimately what you're doing. You're training yourself to use the skills in that creative process. And um, yeah, I, I often see students that, uh, that have not fully developed that, the, the skills yet. And the moment you start using the skills in your process, there is no time to think about how do, how do I apply perspective? How do I uh, create a reflective surface? Uh, how does it work with light and shadow? In that moment, when you're in that creative process, you don't want to be thinking about all those things. You want to be focused on the design, on the development of your thoughts, ideas, uh, the vision. Um, so any distractions in, in how does this pen work or how does perspective work uh, is, uh, is sidetracking you from your uh, your goal, um, so you have to develop your skills to uh, to a very confident level to be able to use them in uh, in the in the creative process, and um, 
um, I forgot where I started. I think it was about the, the use of uh, underlays. So yeah, the earlier you apply all these techniques, uh, all these cheating techniques, the, the faster you actually learn that process. So it's kind of a shortcut into learning um, perspective. Yeah, I love that. And yeah, definitely. Please, everyone that is listening, cheat. <laughs> You've heard Martin. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you. <laughs> I 100% agree with you have to, in a way, when you're learning how to sketch, you're learning how to communicate visually something, right? Like in a way, you're learning how to speak a language in a different way. You're not speaking with your mouth. Um, but it's almost as if you were trying to you know, jump into a conversation, like a creative conversation or like just problem solving something with someone and you didn't really have the language to do that, right? So you, you need to make sure that you know the language before you jump into kind of like solving something complex with it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I compare it to language as well. And um, so I, I usually say, um, like if you're you're starting to learn a new language, uh, like if you, you don't know French and you're starting to learf, learn French, uh, it will take you a while before you you can actually make a conversation. Um, and most people that learn French will get to a conversational level. Uh, but if you want to make poetry or write a book, imagine how much time you would have to spend uh, learning that language to become so fluent that you can create uh, poetry or, or write, write a book or novel um, that requires a, a really high skill level and uh, I think sketching if you compare it to, as a language it, 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 it's the same principle so you you have to fully develop the skill um, to become fluent in using it uh, in that creative process um, but yeah so it, it's definitely a language and I mean, this is going to be a controversial question for you, Martin, but don't you think, I mean, you mentioned that you have to learn, you know, the laws of perspective. You need to learn how to use the markers, the different grades of pen, like all these different things. Don't you think that we're kind of like in this perpetual circle of, because that's how things have been done for so long that we're like, you, you have to invest a lot of time in learning this right and so and some people struggle with it until you they break through so don't you think that we're kind of like in this perpetual circle of like not letting go of that way of visually communicating something because you know that's how it's like how we're like you go into school to study design people teach you this then you adopt it you learn that that new language and that's kind of like part of you. And then yeah. it just continues going and going and going. And so we don't open up the door for exploring other ways of visually communicating as well. That might not be as time consuming or as kind of like difficult for people to understand. Because in a way you need to train your brain to think in a 2D way, in a perspective way, right? Uh, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, like, are we... Are we still doing this because that's the way it was always done? And is it is just the, the switch to use new tools? Is, is switching too hard uh, for us to, uh, to do? And therefore, we just stick with what we have. I actually think um, part of the answer is the opposite. And, uh, and I say this because uh, from the moment I started teaching, which was around 2001, so more than 20 years ago, um, there has been this digital revolution. So people started using Photoshop. Um, we were like the Wacom tablets came, came on, on the market. Um, so, and, and at the same time, 3D modeling and CAD rendering also uh, picked up. And so I saw students picking it up. Uh, myself, I experimented with it as well. Uh, and we started teaching classes also in, in CAD modeling, rendering, uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, things like that. So the digital tools became part of the, 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 the tool set that designers uh, needed. So in addition to sketching. Now what we 
what I noticed as a, as a teacher of design sketching is that, or not just of design sketching, but as a teacher of design, so in the design projects, I noticed that many students um, who weren't particularly good in sketching, in other words, they, ha they didn't uh, develop their skill to a level that gave them enough confidence, they would jump to CAD modeling or Illustrator or Photoshop very early on in the process. Um, so they basically skipped sketching, they maybe made a couple of doodles and that was it, and then they jumped into the computer. And so that gave them the confidence uh, to, to visualize their, uh, their designs, their ideas. And I, I think in a, in, a, in a way it did uh, it does help, and there is a place for all these tools, and uh, it's super valuable if you if you if you can use the tools. But I think one of the things I try and teach my students is just like you mentioned this a lot is workflow. It's it's not just uh, understanding how a tool works and um, and being able to use it in in all ways possible. Uh, it's it's also knowing and not just knowing but experiencing where this tool can be applied and in, in uh, where it makes the most sense and where it doesn't make sense and so when you're in that uh, early stage development of a project uh, very often you uh, you want to keep open-minded you want, want to ha stay in that state of open-mindedness and uh, be open to directions that you didn't see before or someone brings in uh, in a brainstorm session brings up a new direction and uh, you say wow that's it we're totally switching switching up to this new direction and um, the moment you start building something in uh, in, in like a, a CAD application or you start to look at screens um, something strange happens because you you kind of get sucked into a, a new um, environment and especially if you're looking at that one screen the one screen is super limited it's this depending on the size of, you, of your screen but it's it's a very limited window that allows you to look at your hard drive and all the folders and files in there but um if I if you take my studio here, I have a desk, I have a wall here with sketches on the wall, I have actually four walls. And so I can look around and I can see different things. I get inspired, there's actually, you can't see that, but there's a whole wall here with sketches that I use as examples for uh, when I teach my classes. And similarly in, in a design project, I like to surround myself with the artifacts of that project. So I have uh, say I work a day on uh, on a design project. I have a desk full of sketches. Um, well, first of all, they're spread out over my desk. So uh, at, the, at the end of the day, I'm still looking at the first sketch in the corner of my desk. Um, but I usually pin them up on the wall uh, behind me or, or next to me so that I get an overview of that process. Because the next day when I come in, I'm, I'm going to see those sketches again. And just looking at the stuff that I did yesterday with fresh, a fresh pair of eyes will give me new insights. I can see that was a really bad idea. Uh, or, wait a minute, there's something in there that I didn't see yesterday. And today, maybe the overall design is not there, but this detail that I put in there was actually quite interesting. Let's, let's see if I can change that or apply that, uh, integrate it in, in the other design. Um, so that's something that I find very uh, valuable in, in the, um, the physical studio space. And the moment you start working on a computer, and this happened, like co it coincided with working uh, or collaborating with people uh, in different time zones, in different uh, uh, regions. And, um, and, and it's great that technology allowed us to do that, that we, we were able to communicate with people all around the world and, at first it was email and then later video conferencing and all that. It's, it's great that it exists and, and it, it definitely uh, helps a lot in, in communicating with 
uh, people on the other other side, just like we're talking here. Um, but if you're truly designing together, uh, it's limiting because if you're now sending files over, they the files are. Uh, stored in folders on hard drives or cloud somewhere and it's you have to that's one of the pitfalls I would say of, of dig, working digitally regardless if it's Photoshop or Procreate or uh, uh, or CAD modeling they're files and you have to open them to see them and it's it's uh, there's not many systems or tools available that actually allow you to get that overview of the of the creative process uh, and share it with uh, with other people there are some applications um, that are attempting this which is great um, but yeah i think this is something you have to very deliberately create for yourself if you uh if you start working on screens then uh yeah, one of the pitfalls is that you're looking at this one design and it's developing as you go. Um, and, and that's also the CAD models from the time that I was working with SolidWorks. You start building it and you have, um, yeah, you have this history. You can go back into history, but after a while you just, yeah, this is the state that the model is, uh, is in. And uh, you kind of forget all the steps that were taken to get there. And uh, so if someone asks, like, like, yeah, the model that you had this morning is like, yeah, well, that was this morning. I, I didn't save that one. Like, you have to de deliberately save every 10 minutes a version of that file to be able to go back to that the state of that design. And um, so working digitally requires a, a system, a workflow, re requires you to think about how to how to deal with the, yeah, with the information, with the files, with the, the, the states of the design, the process, uh, especially if you start collaborating digitally. You, you need to have yeah, some kind of protocol of how we, how we do this to be able to, uh, to get the maximum out of it. Because that's, I think, the, the biggest pitfall is that you, you end up with the design and uh, it could have been much, much richer, much better developed uh, I think but maybe yeah I don't know I'm, I'm biased it's maybe also because I haven't experienced uh, doing cat modeling myself a lot um, so in that sense I think your question is probably on point that I I tend to work with the tools that I'm experienced with and uh, I, I like sketching so I end up doing that a lot but I think there's some truth in the, the things I just said yeah, no, I, I, I agree 100 percent. And like something really important that you said is making sure that you're continuously like it's how we started this conversation, right? Like the idea of a sketch, the idea of representing that direction that you have in your head is that it's continuously shaping. Right. And so you said something really important there. If you're not yes. seeing all of that shaping in front of you, you don't continuously have that information come kind of like flowing in your head without without unpurposely doing it right like without unpurposely opening something and so i think my question was more towards you know are we kind of like is there another way like it's not cad modeling it's not kind of like you know using a digital you know tablet to create something is there something else i mean and obviously i, I can tell you that there's something else but i want to make this a, a gravity sketch commercial um but I think, I mean, what, like your answer was really, really good in the sense of you need that constant immersion of like being immersed in your ideas somehow. And like the best way that you have found has been through sketching and through being able to be around those sketches and having those sketches continuously talk to you in some way during your process. As a team, you want to immerse yourself in, in all the artifacts of that, uh, of that process. So being sketches or being models or um, 3D prints, uh, whatever it is, yeah, make sure that you're, like every time you, you step into that uh, creative space, you're surrounded with that process of, 
I heard a story once about uh, an architect. It was a little bit older architect who was from the from the time that everything was still uh, created on these big drafting tables, and uh, like the studio was filled with sketches and drawings and pictures, and um, and then I guess during the 80s and 90s of the last century, the computer came in. And if you look at an architectural firm nowadays, you and you come in after hours, like at, at, at six, you just see these black monitors, empty desks, black monitors, empty walls, maybe some models somewhere, uh, and that's it. And um, so the the story was that he would he would go to these computers and see what the the people in his studio were working on, and then make a print of like something that he found and then would make some annotations on the print <laughs> but um yeah he, he was missing that uh the immersion and uh yeah the being able to see what people are doing if if pe everyone is staring at this computer screen uh and you know if they're if they're doing architecture they're also emailing so half of the day you don't even see what they're doing because it's hidden from view you can't uh, you can't see unless they print something it's not visible anymore so you have to ask people well, can you show me the file can you open it can you uh, sh can you create some renderings and then print those or send them to me and yeah it's very different yeah i mean i i think maybe we 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 finish with this last question martin because you're touching you started this very interesting thing around other people being part of the process. And like, that's something really important, right? And that way of, I mean, the fact that you're having to communicate something, it's with yourself, like just going into that flow with yourself, but also getting to communicate that idea with others. And that's kind of like usually the most important part in, in the process. Well, maybe both are important, but you know, how do you get other people to really get into your head and be able to give you what they have in their head in an effective way? I often say sketching is a is a very quick way of prototyping. It's maybe the quickest way of prototyping. And um, yeah, again, this can refer to uh, the the process of uh, developing your own thoughts or sharing those with others. But um, often we need to we need to test our uh, assumptions, test our ideas, our our thoughts, uh, and if it's just thoughts, then it remains in your head and you can't really share it and you can talk about it, but yeah, try describing a shape if in words, that's quite difficult. Um, yeah, so, so sketches are, I would say like handmade sketches, uh, can be the quickest way to transfer your ideas. Um, and yeah, it, it totally depends on them. What part of the, process you are uh, in relation to the workflow again but um i i was and um, yeah <laughs> i was experimenting with with gravity sketch a bit but i haven't experimented with the collab features yet and uh, but I, that's the part where i'm really interested in, in seeing how that can um yeah help me as a designer but also as a teacher how can i how can I use that space to to make students see what I'm seeing, to make stu students understand what I have experienced or what I have um, have learned? And I think, yeah, the collab space is, is a space that I would really like to explore and, and see where uh, uh, where it where I can apply it both in my design work as well as in my uh, my teaching. Yeah. Looking forward to see how that goes um, and to hear your thoughts around it. It might end up being kind of like another way of cheating, um, cheating um, and really kind of like, you know, understanding some shapes in a different way. All right, Martin. Well, thank you so yeah. much for your time. It has been kind of like a really interesting in-depth conversation about sketching. You probably have a lot of these ones, but maybe not. And I thought that it was just kind of like really really fruitful and really kind of like interesting to go so deep into talking about this. I hope you enjoyed it as well.